Hi, this is Lori Johnson with Hancock Whitney Bank, and you're listening to Local Leaders, the podcast. Visit localleaderthepodcast.com for previous episodes or for information on appearing on the show. Hey everyone, it's Jim Chapman with Local Leaders of the Podcast, and I want to make you aware of a fantastic deal they have going on right now at Fit Body Boot Camp in Denham Springs, Louisiana. If you go to the link getfitdenhamsprings.com slash local leaders, you can get $30 off of the regular price of $129 for 30 days of classes. Go to the link, click it, sign up, 30-day classes for only $99 through that link. It's a special deal offered to all of our listeners at Local Leaders, the podcast. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another edition of Local Leaders, the podcast. And today I have two gentlemen sitting across from me that are going to totally change your perception of development and developers in general. These guys are total rock stars. They develop primarily right here in Livingston Parish, and I'm going to go ahead and introduce them. They're with Front Porch Property Group. And over here, we have Mr. Justin Bryson. Over here, we have Mr. Chase Catalano. How are y'all doing? Oh, we're good, Jim. Y'all excited to be on today? Very fired happy. up? Yep, very yeah. happy to be here. <laughs> good deal. I love it when they get fired up. So I want to talk a little bit about y'all personally before we get into all the amazing things you're doing with Front Porch Property Group. And y'all have some interesting stories. Uh, Chase, we're going to start with you. You've been a Denham Springs resident for about 13 years. That's correct. And you're married with two children. One in the oven as well. And one in the, <laughs> and one in the oven percolating, just waiting to get out, huh? And here's an interesting thing. You have a 12-year-old daughter. Her name is Bren. That's correct. And she's pretty strong. She would. <laughs> she has the title of strongest uh, female 13 and under in the United States and holds an wow. American record as well. Well, let me tell you, anytime you have a title of number one in the United States on anything, you're pretty good, right? A two-time national champion in weightlifting. That's right. We're looking for number three this year in 22. Wow, amazing. Chip off of the old block. Huh? Uh, I don't know. She, <laughs> she, she, she puts me to shame. <laughs> She's Well, it, you know, it's amazing with weightlifting in particular. It takes a lot of discipline, right? That's right get up every day you got to push them weights and uh and so you you know you're obviously proud of her you you light Absolutely. up the second uh the second i brought her up and you also have a love for kind of restoring things you got a 69 bronco 67 67 yes, bronco sir. wow it's, it was That's a, a beauty. yeah it was a bucket list buy it came at the right time at the right price and uh I, I will not let that one go at all yeah it's gonna stay around for a while it's a it's kind of like a dream car for it, me it, it, me too. Love I, I, I have to pinch myself. And we're going to turn over here to Mr. Justin, and you're also married. Yep. You have a child as well. Yeah, a two-year-old little boy. Yeah, Sorry. nothing in the oven, though. No, nothing in the oven. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Uh, man, have you had an awesome uh, experience so far in life. You're 32 years old. Yep. And uh, you have a bachelor's degree from LSU. Yep. Go uh, Tigers. Go Tigers. Yes, indeed. And you have a master's from Grantham University. That's right. Uh, in addition to that, y'all, uh, you were you've been in the National Guard since two thousand and nine. Yeah, enlisted in nineteen. Very good. And you're a captain. Yeah. So thank you for your service, yep. obviously. Uh, and in addition to that, both of you are full time Exxon refinery employees. That's it. That is which correct. is where y'all met, I would imagine. It is. Okay, excellent. And you also are partners at Front Porch Property Group. So uh, so y'all been together for a little while as far as Front Porch is concerned. How, y'all started in 2020? That's correct. Yeah. That's a heck of a time to start a business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Some might say a little crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Some yeah. might say, hey, man, it, look, any, any, all business centers are crazy. I've, uh, I've been convinced of that because we all There's take risks, screws, right? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. There's nothing safe about what we do. That's for sure. Uh, so you eventually, you, you form this partnership and and there's a story in and of that. So whoever wants to take this, just kind of explain how you ended up forming front porch property group. Yeah. So it's kind of funny. We were, um, I don't know if you remember back in 2020, there was a, a, a fire at the Exxon refinery, uh, yes. in the pipe band. I do. So whenever that happened, they, they pulled guys from all over the refinery to come respond to the emergency because they wanted to you know get the plant back and shut the whole plant down. They wanted to get the plant back up and running as, quickly as they could yeah um, so they just started pulling people from all over the refinery uh they pulled both of us um onto that team that was a sign of that recovery um we were working that um i was kind of in the middle of trying to get a little project management consulting business going off the ground i got a background in project management so uh at that time i was trying to get that going um chase had his uh his last development company going uh trifecta property investments. Um, and then we just kind of hit it off and started talking, you know, talking shop, talking about owning businesses, talking about doing project management and land development or something that's always right. interested me. Um, and that was, that was in February of 2020. So we had had a couple of conversations, both work nights, um, like we're doing right now on that shutdown. Yeah. Um, and we had, we had talked about it in passing and then we kind of just went our separate ways, you know? And then I remember one day, uh, maybe August or so of 2020 is out of the blue. He sent me a message on Facebook. That was a, a piece of property. He's like, Hey, I think this would be a good opportunity for us. And, you know, to kind of go after. Yeah. Um, I looked at it. We kind of talked on Facebook messenger. I hadn't talked to a dude in months. Right. Yeah. Uh, so we kind of thought it over and we kind of just talked back and forth. Like what, you know, what do you have in mind? What do you think? What right. do the numbers look like? Um, yeah. And, th I mean, those conversations all went well, and the margins looked good. So, uh, I mean, we ended up just kind of taking a leap at it, right, just taking a yeah. swing at it, and it ended up paying off, and then uh, kind of exploded after that. Just kind of all went from there. Wow. Yeah, you were basically like, huh, this is a nice property. Let me send this to my buddy and see what he, <laughs> what he thinks of it, and, and boom. Our visions born. were in line for, from kind of from the jump of why we wanted to start things. We had – similar paths and vision of what we wanted out of it. So it made sense. Sometimes you have to force things. Some things come together naturally. Our personalities, I'm kind of the yin and he's kind of the yang. Yeah. And little, you got to have that. Yeah. So I'm a little more aggressive. He's a little more conservative and like puts the numbers together a, a lot longer than I would. Mm -hmm. um, and that it balances out pretty well. But Very we, good. But, but we switch as well. We'll, we'll, we'll switch the yin and the yang. Sometimes he's more aggressive yeah. and I'm more conservative. So it's, it works well, out well. That's right, and you, you you don't you really don't want two of the exact same personality because Agreed. then you know you don't you don't have any bounce off or any feedback that's constructive one way or the other. In my opinion, right? Yeah, um, I say all the time too. Like if we're ever on the exact same page on something, it's time to bail. Like, yeah. <laughs> if we both show up to a property, and we're like we have to have this right now. Like we might as well get in a truck. And <laughs> I, I don't think there's been one yet where both of us were like, yes, absolutely, yes. You know, right. it, it's all whenever he's going full bore, I'm like, oh, hold on. Let's take a look at it. You know, whenever yeah. I'm like, hey, we got to have this. Like, well, let's, you know, let's make yeah. sure this is right for us. I mean, to this point, we have not both said yes on something right off the bat, which is yeah. kind of interesting. Right. And, you know, y'all also bring some interesting individual talents into this. You were kind of in the development business uh, prior to that. Right. And you were in the military where you kind of specialized in project management. There. That's right. So that's a that's a great um, starting point. It amazes me when I when I was thinking about this podcast. You know, people are. I believe that that uh, people are put in people's lives for certain reasons, and absolutely, and you can kind of track that thing back. And in the fact that y'all bring these individual talents, and you were able to kind of find each other and then combine them and turn this into a success you know, I feel like doesn't happen by accident. I think every everything has a reason and a purpose. And I think it's great that y'all both bring these individual talents. It's important. It's important to, uh, to business for sure. So that's a great thing. And Justin, we mentioned you do have a strong background. And how beneficial would you say the military has been to what you bring to Front Porch Property? So, 
Sandra Richard has been in the business of selling homes for over 20 years. This award-winning realtor brings the perfect blend of professionalism, integrity, and client satisfaction to every buying and selling transaction. A passion for both her clients and her community makes Sandra the perfect choice when buying or selling your home. So if you're in need, call the Cajun Lady, Sandra Richard at 225-955-5484 or visit her on the web at sandrasellshouses.com. Sandra Richard, a proud sponsor of Local Leaders Podcast. You know, most of the experience that I have in project management is in the military. And, Mm -hmm. you know, anybody that knows anything about the military, you know, whenever you look from the outside, the military's got everything together, right? Yeah. Meanest fighting force on the planet. You know, everything's squared away. Everybody's uh, in line. The military is chaos. (laughs) The military is is our experts at managing chaos. Yes. Um, So, you know, nothing's the same. No no rules are the same. You know, the rules of engagement change all the time. Yeah. Um, Circumstances change all the time. So growing up and having this, you know, long set of of experience managing projects in the military in an environment that is always changing. Yes. um, Allows you to become very versatile and allows you to like, gain the experience and the skill set to think outside the box and make decisions and, and look for alternatives. I think that's probably one of the things that's led us to success is that if we run into a roadblock, we find an alternative. Like we, we put our heads together. We try to look at every Avenue and, and find an alternative. And that's probably due in, in small part, at least to, you know, my, some of my experience in the military where if you hit a wall, you got to go through it. I mean, yeah. back up and hit it again until you find a way. You that's know? right. Um, Very good advice. Yeah, I think just that that versatility and that like drive to figure it out and solve the problem at all cost um, has led to some of that success. I think also um, the communication. You're you're forced to communicate in the military. Yes, on a constant basis. Yes, and yeah. we talk more than most women talk to each other that have been best friends for thirty years. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Yeah. I mean, Honestly. look, and in it, you have a great relationship, and that's that's an important aspect. And you're, I'm sure, you're not afraid to tell him when you think something's wrong, and no. and vice versa. And that's probably the most important part. It you is. Know, is that open line the of the good, the bad, the ugly, the great. We we talk about it all. Yeah, constantly. Yeah, fantastic. And uh, Chase, for those that may not know exactly what it is, and and, and I know it's a vast definition, but kind of give us the the short definition of what a land developer does kind of break down their role in the construction process. So land development would be for us, the way that we would perceive land development would be buying larger parcels of land and making and doing the infrastructure, whether that be clearing house pads, road infrastructure, gas, water utilities, and making it, and subdividing it into smaller chunks where it's more affordable for the consumer. Yes, very good definition. And um, important to mention that, uh, you know, it's not just as simple as, hey, I see a, a you know, big square piece of land, I'm going to buy it, and then I'm going to sell it, and it's all going to be – there are so many parts to that. You mentioned it. I mean, you've got – uh, infrastructure that has to be developed on that land. You have to the red tape. How about the red tape that's involved? It's, it's you huge. Know? If you see a mud puddle, uh-oh, we got a wetlands here. Oh, that's a palomino. I mean, it's crazy what you got to deal with from the aspect of the red tape that goes around developing. So one thing that impresses me about both of you is um, I'm not an old guy, but I'm older than you guys, and uh, and the fact that you uh, just see these challenges and are able to kind of kind of go beyond those and do what you have to do is is pretty impressive it's this is not like you're building a retail establishment and you're going to run it in it in you know it's an easy procedure there's a lot of stress involved and in, you know when i think about what you do but i think that's military backgrounds help that right yeah you I know think, i think we both are, have the ability to stay pretty cool calm and collected with uh all the things raining from coming from different avenues in this yeah, and, and divide that equally between us as well. That makes it pretty easy. Or, 
easier easier yeah and one thing that's that uh well it's not funny but it was like wow i couldn't imagine having to deal with this so in the middle of you kind of starting off this company right row justin's got to go uh get deployed yeah. <laughs> in the middle yeah. of this to were you in iraq or, or afghanistan yeah, I went to, okay. to jordan and kuwait yeah, oh okay was. yeah so um which you know its own battle over there obviously but you know you're kicking off this business and you're probably like oh crap my partner's got to go save the world yeah i've known the both of us <laughs> at that beginning of time and uh i think it was right before christmas i got the phone call yeah and he said i got some good news and some bad news you know christmas is going to be great beginning of new year is not going to be and yeah that's, that was how that conversation went um, yeah yeah, I think our, our formation documents have our company, like, starting in September of 2020 or something like that. And it was, you know, early December when I called. So we were four months into it, and I was like, hey, I'm leaving for you yeah. know, a year. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't make no mistakes. I'll, yeah, be it, back. I'll be back in nine months or whatever it was, yeah. Yeah, and at the time, we had one – I mean, we had one property, right? We had just bought our first property. So we, we formed our, our LLC – right before we purchased our first property in that in September. Yeah. Um, so it wasn't that big of a deal, right? Sure. Um, it, it turned into a much bigger deal <laughs> over time. I don't know how, uh, you know, after, after coming back into what I came back into, I don't, I don't know how Chase was able to manage what he managed <laughs> while I was gone. I mean, how I tried to it? do, yeah. I didn't want to stress him out. Yeah. Uh, I've personally been, I was in his shoes pre in in my previous life in the military. Yeah. So I didn't. I I, I tried when we talked. We talked shop and business, but I tried not to let on that it's a lot going on. Yeah. 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 Well, good for you. Yeah, and you know he's yeah, out there he had, doing he had his bigger, thing. And he had bigger things to worry about. That's that right. Time. That's right. And and uh, you know you're back and and you're rocking and you and yeah. you're doing great things and. This is the next thing I want to mention, uh, Justin, and I'll turn to you on this. One of the ways both of you describe your company, and something I feel separates y'all big time from some of the land development companies out there, is that you promote responsible land development. How about that? There, It's possible that you can be a developer and actually be responsible about it and community-minded and all of those sorts of things. So I I already know these examples, but give give everybody else an example of what kind of separates you guys relative to the standard uh, run-of-the-mill developer who develops these subdivisions that are very small tracks and all those sorts of things. Yeah, so we don't we don't fool with anything under um, an acre. And in fact, we try to stay over uh, an acre and a half, you know, between an acre and a half to three acres. Yeah. Um, that's kind of the sweet spot in between like where we're still able to, you know, make some money, but we're also able to, you know, keep the area in, in mind. Yes. Um, you know, we've, we've purchased what, 60, 64 72. acres, 72 acres now. Yeah. Um, I just forgot. We just closed on another one. Yeah. Uh, so we purchased 72 acres and we've developed it into 20 lots. Right. Um, wow. That's yeah. over three acres a lot. Yeah. And you can, you know, in 72 acres, you know, a lot of developers, if they bust them into quarter acre lots, I mean, you're looking at over 300 lots that a yeah. developer would go after. So, um, you know, where most run of the mill developers are looking to cram as many properties into a piece of, you know, a larger parcel as they can. Um, we don't, we don't do that. Love so it. Well, you know, we bought, uh, 16 acres, you know, 18 acre tracks and we're cutting them into four or five parcels instead of cutting them into 32 parcels or um, that's huge man yeah and i mean when you talk about the money side of it, it's crazy too i mean we could sell you know 18 20 parcels off of one track for you know 40 50 thousand yes. dollars i mean it's huge money right yes but whenever we started our business we didn't we didn't really want to you know we, we we did it for like pocket change you know what i mean like yeah. we both have really good jobs at exxon like i i've you know, supplemental income from the guard. So it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't really a money thing. It was like a, a pocket change deal that we wanted. You know, it's like go buy new trucks or right. you know, get, a, <laughs> get a boat or a right, side by side yeah. or something. Um, <laughs> for the, for the, for the toys and all yeah, the necessities yeah. that us as men need. That's right. Four wheelers. Yeah, my wife wouldn't let me buy one any other way. So. <laughs> That's right. Um, you better get another job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I hear you. But I mean, 
we stick true to that though. I mean, it, yeah. at, at this point, especially, it'd be very easy for us to go after a large chunk of land and decide that we're going to, you know, delay that investment for two years while we go develop an actual like full blown subdivision. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's not what we want to do. It's not what we want for the parish. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, we bought 16 acres in Walker. Um, it, or it's actually our first development. It's got 11 acres that we're not touching. I mean, it's got 11 acres that we're leaving completely undeveloped. Wow. wow. Um, so, well, I think I get a feeling that's just who you guys are, man. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we both, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a big time outdoorsman. So I want to have as little impact to, you know, what's left of the hunting property in Louisiana yeah. anyway. BJ Pawn and Gun in Denham Springs wants to buy your unwanted gold jewelry, gold coins, and gold bullion. With 30 years of experience operating in the Livingston Parish area, BJ Pawn wants to be your source when selling your gold. So stop by BJ Pawn today for a no obligation offer. BJ Pawn, a proud sponsor of Local Leaders, the podcast. Yeah, um, that's a great thing. We yeah. want to we want to boost the medium average income through this area. That's why we we lightly restrict the properties. We're making sure that home values stay the same. Yeah, you know, if you build a hundred hundred and eighty five thousand dollar homes, or we put five four hundred and fifty thousand dollar homes with families, we boosted that average income because we're not. We're not building to that lower grade right now. Right. Yeah. And that's a huge thing. I mean, that's a great thing for the people that live here. And it's like, man, these are the developers we want here. We're not squeezing the land for every dollar that it could be pulled out of it. Yeah. Yeah, I I saw firsthand what happened in 2016. I was in Livingston um, with the National Guard, like at the courthouse in Livingston for the duration of the event. Yeah. Um, It's very, very clear what overdevelopment and over you know over over engineering infrastructure can do uh to an area so yes. I, like i do not want to contribute to that problem at all yeah so everything we do we kind of focus on uh how to have the uh, you know the minimal amount of impact you know we we looked at a property we could have made pretty good money on um in denim not long ago but it was um you know pretty far below base flood elevation we'd have had to bring in a ton of fill dirt to get the houses up above base flood elevation so they wouldn't have to carry you know crazy premiums on their homeowners insurance right and because of that because we were gonna have to bring so much fill dirt in and build these big you know ant mound homes we just passed on it just let the deal go i mean the margins were great i mean we could have made good money yeah but we don't want to build where was that water gonna go yeah yeah you know we're gonna put these anthills below that level you know yeah like i said i you know i 72 hours of no sleep during 2016 flood while we were pulling people out like waist deep water, chest oh, yeah. deep water, neck deep water. I mean, it was, it was a mess. You know, you're doing your whole series on it. Yeah. Um, you know, everybody lives here knows how bad it was. And we like refused to contribute to that problem. Yeah, man. That's awesome. Awesome. I'm getting chills in here, man. That, and that's exactly why I do podcasts like this. Because that's something you can't communicate on a billboard. That's something you can't communicate really in a 30-second commercial. But in a long-form podcast, these people can see who you are and see that you are atypical. Um, You have your heart in the right place and your company in the right place. And uh, and so, you know, it's an honor to do a podcast with you guys on on things like that. So, Chase, I want to shout you out for a second. Um, for your answer to the following question, I asked you what individuals had a large influence on you and why. And you answer, get this, y'all, my wife. She was in school for her master's as a nurse practitioner, and I saw the amount of time and energy she was putting in for our family and future, and I knew I had to match that energy. Now, first of all, I want to give you kudos. You might be the first person to mention their wife as the largest influence so dude that is like major props you know when you get home tonight she she owes you a big hug (laughs) she'll probably give you a big hug for that um also uh how important it is the support of your family you know the fact that how important is that to business in general and your business that your family's there they got your back they're behind you 100 percent 
that's the reason I started my first property development company was because she was tired of the bedside and really wanted to get into the higher um, degree of nursing, which, you know, she wanted to be a CRNA mm -hmm. um, or go for family nurse practitioner, yep. which took a lot of clinical time. So you, you, it's not able, if you know anybody in the nurse practitioner field, to work a full-time job and do 250 hours of clinicals oh, yeah. per semester. Mm -hmm. So we had to go to a part-time role. So our, 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 our income was going to change. Yeah. We knew that. So... I was watching her study every night till midnight and there's a lot of tears. There's a lot of reading. There's a lot of projects. There's a lot of clinical work. And, um, I, I had to make up, I, I felt that it was my job as, as the husband and the king of the household to, at that point, fill that gap. Yeah. So that was the reason I started getting into land development. I was already interested in it. Yeah. So I went to the books and pulled all the codes and ordinances of Livingston Parish and Which are, are no fun. I've done that myself. <laughs> and started reading and doing, yeah. putting sticky tabs because I work nights at Exxon a lot and we have some downtime here and there. Yeah. So pulled the codes and ordinances, started reading a lot. And very good. Trying to make sure that I was trying to follow the, the T. Yeah, very good. Well, shout out to your wife for, for being a, a large influence on you. Now, Justin, uh, let's talk about some of the uh, – the services at your company, Front Porch Property Group, outside of land development. We, uh, our, our plan, and we, we talked about it from the jump. We, we actually spoke about it last night at length, is uh, build your company on a napkin, or the hierarchy of what you want. So when you're big and you've, you've made it there, you can look back and see how you wanted to structure that. Yes. Um, we have big things in the works for Front Porch Property Group. Oh, I love it. And uh, Any you want to talk about right now? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, so uh, the, the vision ahead yes. is uh, Front Porch uh, Paradise Group. We will own vacation rentals throughout the United States. Oh, my. And, I like vacation rentals. And uh, try to really focus here on the next one is in the Florida Panhandle, going to some metropolitan cities, Nashville, Austin, uh, if you you know anything about Nashville, it's oh, yeah. bachelor, Nash Vegas, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> so we we, we, we want to be able to capitalize that on that with uh, with some Airbnbs uh, throughout the United States, and wow. then uh, we will have a front porch project group that will be all of, you know, under the umbrella of the property group. Yes. So we will be dealing with full home remodels, new construction, uh, just. Every project you want to handle in the in the real estate world. Very good. Um, and then eventually, depending upon if we can find the right person, we want to put people in that in in those places that are rock stars in their own. We're we're not real estate uh, agents, right? Yeah. I'm not going to label myself as that, but we want we would like to get to the point where we have a brokerage mm -hmm. and bring someone on where they own front porch realty group and they are the face they are the rock star they're the one crushing the game yeah so that you put everyone into individually in that umbrella but together you're this unstoppable machine fit blends of denim springs can help you with everything from meal prep to supplements i love it that they serve breakfast all day in addition to the best ultra healthy wraps you can really get anywhere in Livingston Parish. They are home of the $5 Smoothie Friday and are an amazing sponsor of Local Leaders, the podcast. Fit Blends Denim Springs, fast fit food for you. Man, you sound just like me, except for mine's media. Yeah, and yours, no, <laughs> we're in different <laughs> fields, but I think very similar to y'all in that. Um, you know, it's not just about that the the one company. It, it it's branching off of that company, and and you know, when you have success in what you're doing, what I find where I find business owners sometimes miss the mark is they settle on that completely and they don't have that umbrella with those companies underneath it that can sustain them. You know, if you, if you do it right, 
a, a, a company under that umbrella can sustain you when maybe this company is slacking, you know, or right. that, not just from the market, that, that not is, necessarily. That is 100% the vision. Yeah. yeah. Love it. I read a book whenever I, you know, I do, I do a lot of, of like personal development reading. Yes. Um, but I read a book while I was overseas called The E Myth. Yes. And what the guy talks about in the book is how you have to have like, you have to have three distinct personalities in a business for it to be successful, right? You have to have the technician, which is the guy that like is on the ground doing the work. He's in the trenches. He's out there beating the street. Like, but that's all he knows, right? He's a technician. Right. That's it. And you have to have the manager. That's the guy that knows how to get the most out of people. The leaders in your organization, those are the people that, you know, can motivate the technician to do his job, to do it well, to hold the standards. And you have to have the entrepreneur. That's the guy that's like, He's not even looking at the business. He's looking out in front, trying to see what's next, what else we can do, what else you can capitalize on, like what other market you can enter, how you can make the most money. Um, and like that that whole little analogy kind of stuck with me. It's like three personality thing. And, you, yeah. and they all three have to be in sync, right? So, you know, if Chase is being the technician one day, I want to go be the manager or the entrepreneur and think about what's coming next. And if he's out looking at, you know, how what we're going to do with – front porch paradise group and all that, then I'm going to make phone calls in the back, you know? Yeah. What I mean? Um, but that's actually where that idea of writing out your business came from. So we, it, it was in the same book. You write out like what you want your company to look like whenever you're a multi-million dollar company. Yeah. And you, sh you start acting like that today. You yeah. know what I mean? So you start putting the things in place to get moving and, and structure the company um, so that you have room to grow. That's what the guy says. Like, one of the largest myths is that, you know, people fail because they, you know, they're not capable of being entrepreneurs. They fail because they don't think like entrepreneurs. They don't think yes. like business owners. They think like technicians. They get stuck in the technician phase. And he said a technician can never be an entrepreneur. So you have to be able to look out beyond that. That's um, right. Beyond that technician level. I agree with that 100%. And I think, I think the difference between maybe the most successful of business owners and those who don't see that success is not the vision. It's acting on that vision. It's execution. Yes. Yeah, so absolutely. many people fail to execute. Yeah. They, they have the great idea, but it stops there. They get intimidated maybe. Maybe it's a little bit. And not being afraid to lot. fill the role of, like you said, for the year that I was gone, I'm in the trenches running with the business but now both of us are back things are a little bit more leveled out we're both looking up and above so we we can't be afraid to fill that technician role underneath us for that to still be working like it should right. while we're looking over the, the the mountain peaks love it man love it and that's look check out that book i'm gonna check it out yeah, i haven't read that the one. e myth right the e myth yep. check that out folks uh, Chase, so uh, you focus on acreage style properties, as you mentioned, Justin, and I want to give some stats and we kind of, well, we talked about this earlier, but the fact that you use the example of 20 lots or, or thereof, right. and, and yeah. you had, that was composed of 72 acres. So That's this right. is, these are really large tracks. You mentioned how, you know, this could be 300 homes, 350 homes that you could have put on there. Uh, you did not do that. It was a little over 20 homes, and that's smart development, right? Um, it's obvious where your heart is with that as far as uh, as a community is concerned. And what stands out to me is it's obvious it's not really all about the money, you know, because if it was all about the money, you'd be able to hop from house to house to house on those rooftops, you know. Um, now, as far as the red tape, I want to kind of get into that a little bit. And as far as, and we'll take Livingston Parish because that's where you do the primary bit of your business. Um, how has it been from a standpoint of, uh, I guess, the government side of things, you know, the parish council and, and they work with you pretty good, it seems like? They do. Um, good. The city planning or parish planning office has been a great resource for us. Mm -hmm. Um they're very forthcoming of sitting down in the office and saying, this is what we're looking at. Is this available? Because there's some, there's some clear as mud type situations that you can get into, and, and yeah. it's not spelled out very well. Right. So you, you have to – sometimes you would get some pushback, and they're not willing to answer your questions. But Livingston's – they're pretty good about it. They're, if we make an appointment or we're able to get in there when they're not crammed full of people and they're waiting for permits, or they'll sit down with us. They'll, they'll say, look, they'll pull it up on GeoPortal. We'll look at things. And they'll say, 
we'll say, this is what we were looking at doing. And they'll say, no, you might run into this or that. And this is why. So they, they have been uh, a resource for us. And, and there's obviously red tape everywhere when it comes to wetlands and, uh, there, there's there's a lot going on. You got to yeah. build a team of people that can help you uh, identify those things, so you're not really getting into the red tape later. Yeah, we've pulled three um, a lot sales recently that have been from Ascension Parish. Mm-hmm. Um, very wealthy families mm-hmm. that are moving their kids that are in sports, their money this way. That's helping everything that we do in Livingston hundred yeah. percent and we're, and we're stealing them from Ascension. Yeah. Bringing them. Over yes. There. That's even better. Yeah, we it's see a better. lot. We see a lot working, <laughs> um, you know, working at Exxon guys that grew up in Livingston Parish that whenever, you know, they go over to Exxon and they start making decent money. They all move like St. Francisville mm-hmm. central, right? Mm-hmm. Central's the worst. I mean, it's right across the river. You yeah. Know I mean, it's right there. Yeah. Um, but instead of staying in Livingston Parish, those guys go across in East Baton Rouge Parish and um, yeah. are over into St. Francisville, and, and their money goes with them. You That's know what I mean? Right. So, you know, I'm from Springfield. Mm. Um, Springfield needs a new school bad. You know what I mean? The, yeah. the town's growing to the point where the school's overrun. Right? Yeah. You, know, you got temporary buildings, and mm. um, you can't fix it, right? You can't do anything about it without tax dollars. That's right. Uh, and without good – development you know kind of higher end developments in the parish a place for these people with um some money to want to go they're they're going to ascension parish they're going to st francisville they're going to central they're they're not they're not hanging out in watson that's they're right not hanging out in, in walker and springfield they're they're going to st tammany and to east baton rouge parish or, or west Louisiana parish yeah y'all are some guys that get it and that's ex- that's exactly right. And and look, Ascension Parish, they got plenty of money over there. They got the plants, you know, they got right. every every large plant outside of Exxon is in is there and the tax dollars they get are enormous. What they have to work with versus what Livingston Parish has to work with is night and day, and that's just right. what the plants give them. Not to mention the residents. And so uh you you hit the nail on the head. We want to attract that here. And one way you can attract that is by having larger developments that people want. And uh, and what could be better than an acre, you know, an acre and a half, three acres of property to we're, deal with? We're essentially marketing to ourselves yeah. uh, the same type of people, that I guess, that we are yeah. in the sense that we don't want to be on top of our neighbor. We want our kids to grab a four-wheeler and go ride in the front yard if they want that they can ride around and throw a baseball and not hit their neighbor yeah. or – you know, have just some space between them. Yeah. That's it. William Waldrop of TWFG Insurance in Denham Springs can service all of your insurance needs. Offering auto, life, health, and commercial insurance, William Waldrop of TWFG Insurance is a proud supporter of Local Leaders, the podcast. All right, so there are options out there, people, still. And uh, and these would be guys that you would want to contact. Now, uh, Chase, who would you say are, like, great – I don't know if you call them referral partners, but people that you, you like to know, you kind of – you tend to do business with on a frequent basis, um, people that you want to build a business relationship with, what type of – individual would that be um bulldogs Bulldogs. (laughs) our our realtor is we we call her our bulldog she's (laughs) she doesn't take no for an answer she i I give a lot of homework in the realtor world yeah um constant because that's how we make our analysis sure so i'll call her at 9 p.m because i work nights and Mm -hmm. she's going to bed with her kids and she i'll say I need all these things, and 9 a.m. the next morning, I have a full email list or text to both of us of everything I've asked. Um, and, and some of that's meaningless because we might do our analysis and go, nope, that's not going to work. So she spent time, effort, looking through all this, but she knows it's pay, it'll pay off. Um, mm-hmm. She is She's tirelessly working for us all the time. So I want people like that in every facet of our business. Yeah. Mortgage lending. Uh, analysis of properties when it comes to wetlands, which we've we've nailed down some of that stuff. We, yeah. we we're starting to build that team of people that 
work as hard as we do, and it, it feels good when you're on when you're starting to build that team of people underneath, not underneath you, because they work side by side. Sure. And they're in their own facet, but that person you can rely on. Contractors, yeah. obviously, that's a huge thing too. Yeah. Um, that's a hard. That's a hard group to work with sometimes. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes they're there. Twenty five years working with them. <laughs> sometimes they're there. Sometimes they're not. But when you find that that guy, yeah, or girl, that one that always answers emails, always there, communicate. Hey, it's okay if you can't be there. Tell me you can't be there. Yes, communicate. Yeah, that's yeah. a that's a big thing. How about that? Yeah, and and uh, I I know exactly what you mean. And look, I built a career uh, in the construction world by being the one that would answer his phone at any time, and and really go out of my way to help my clients. And uh, and I think that's important. And that's separate. That's a separator with people. And look. Y'all, y'all would probably do business with somebody till the end of time if they were that type of person and gave you that type of service because you can respect it. I'll yeah. pay a little more. Yeah, if you're that good and you're punctual and you communicate, I'll yeah. pay you a little more for that. Yeah, yeah, because it's worth my time. There's a value <laughs> yeah. to it. Yeah, that's exactly right. Now, uh, Justin, one nice promotion that we definitely need to mention on here. And look, my eyeballs popped out when I saw this. <laughs> so I guess we call this like a, a referral bonus, but you basically uh, offer a thousand dollars to anyone uh, that kind of refers, I guess, closed business your way or tell, tell us about that. Yeah. That was something we started doing like right at the beginning. We had to, I'm not a, neither one of us are like social media gurus, right? We don't know. Right. I, neither of us are marketing guys. Like we don't know, yeah. um, how to market. I don't know how to market. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, we yeah, did. we're learning it. We're figuring it out. Um, that's our specialty. But yeah. So we thought like right at the beginning, we're like, how are we going to get people to come to us? And we're like, I don't know. Let's th- just throw some money at them, I guess. So <laughs> that's, a, we, that's always a good one. Yeah, we, so we decided to do this like thousand dollar referral bonus. Um, and then we made it fun. I, we went and got one of those big checks. Everybody wants to hold that check. Oh yeah. The, the big, you know, the yeah, big, absolutely. The big yeah, it's, a, it's a five foot check. Oh, yeah, I love huge. it. Um, yeah. So yeah, we started doing a thousand dollar referral bonus, and we just decided to keep it. Like if somebody, you know, if somebody has a friend that's looking for land or whatever, and they send them our way, and we end up closing the deal, we'll cut you a check for a thousand dollars, or we can hand your hundreds. Whatever there you, you want. go, there you go, folks. But you got to take a picture with the check, even that's if you get cash. <laughs> <laughs> thousand bucks, I'll take a picture with that check all yeah. day long. Very good. Uh, so listeners out there, look, you you looking for some land, or you know someone looking for some land, and. Uh, in Livingston Parish, you refer them to these guys. You can make yourself an extra, an extra G right there on yeah. the spot. So very good, Chase. I asked you to define a leader, and you stated someone who consistently puts in the hard work, no matter what level they are at, and willing to listen as much as they teach. Someone who possesses the traits they expect of these under the leadership, and someone who learns from failure. Got it out that time. That's it. Now, I can't argue with that really at all. But it, but what you said there that really impressed me was you said uh, someone that learns from failure. Sometimes you have to fail to succeed, right? Oh, I, that, I, don't, yeah. I don't think there's a sometimes. I think you, you have to. Yeah. We're, we're getting away from that, I think, as a whole, as a society. We're getting away from failure and learning from that. Yeah. We want to protect everyone from failure, but that's how some of the greatest moments and teachings have come through if, failure. If you don't, if, especially as a leader, man, you know, I've been, like I said, I've been in the guard and leadership positions for, you know, 10 years. Um, if you don't, if you don't fail to, to grow, then you're not, you're not really growing. You're just getting lucky. Like you, you're just a really lucky dude that you yeah. falling into good circumstances. Cause the only way, um, to really learn a lesson that sticks is to mess it up a couple of times. That's right. And I tell people all the time, but you know, the difference between succeeding in the end is some people fail and they give up. And that's not that's not the time to give up. That's the time to learn and then push, keep pushing. And eventually, you know, you, you're going to push through all of that and you're going to find success. You're going to jump off that cliff. You're going to hit a lot of rocks on the way down. You're going to hit a ton of them. It's unavoidable. But eventually, your parachute is going to open and you're going to soar. And that's, uh, I think that's something that's important for people to understand and learn is that failure is just a part of it. To be a good leader, you have to have good qualities. Yeah. There's no other way around it. Yeah, that's right. 100%. 100%. And, and uh, you know, leaders can look at themselves 
and know what they're good at and what they're not good at. Just like you just said, you know, we're not good at social media. We're not that those people. So maybe we hire that out to someone who is. You know, uh, so many business owners get caught up in, I can do everything myself and I can do everything right. And, oh no, this is my company. I know exactly what I need to do. And look, man, find what you're weak at and hire someone yeah, else that's to right. do it. Yeah, those are, those I'm, people I'm, are going to fail. I'll yeah, make, they're I'm, set I'm up good at it. being my own worst critic, and that's great because I know that what I'm not good at. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> That's exactly right. Yes, indeed. Um, Justin, I asked you what the most difficult thing to overcome in regard to people understanding your business, and you discussed the perception of land developers. And we talked a lot about that today. But kind of, kind of again, let's hammer down – kind of the difference between front porch and and maybe typical yeah i know land guys. whenever i answer that question i think i wrote like exactly that i was afraid to tell people we were mm-hmm. land developers so whenever people ask what we do in real estate i like won't string those words together like that right i won't say oh we're land developers i'll say <laughs> you know try to come up with some creative oh we you know we buy and sell property here we yeah. you know we uh you know we yes. try to build uh you know build neighborhoods and communities and things I, like i'm terrified to tell people that we're land developers because especially in lewis and parish man land you know land developers have a, a bad rap you yeah know? nobody wants to sit across the table from a, a guy that's buying up you know momal's cow patty uh right. past year and sure and turning yeah. it into a, a subdivision that's right but totally opposite of what you guys are doing i mean yeah. y- y'all you're are. still gonna have your naysayers they're sure they're, there's always going to be the people that are, that aren't happy about it. Whether it's four nice homes or 150, they're still not happy it gets bought. But those, it, if you ain't got haters, no. you ain't doing something right. No, that's right. That's right. Uh, Chase, I asked you what you would say is has been the key to your business, and you stated communication and in depth research and development on what to bring to the market. Kind of expand on that. We talked a little bit earlier about it's a lot more than just buying a, p- a square piece of grass. You know, there's a lot behind that. Kind yeah, of the market analysis of what's being bought in that area, and it changes. Every parish is is different. If you go to Mid City in Baton Rouge, comparative to what you do here in Livingston, totally different. Mm. The landscape is different. the The structure of what they buy there is different. So doing that, um, you know, we we don't own just land development either. We we have we have condo by LSU. Like we look and we make sure that we're diving into all the particulars. Is this like on our condo? Is this rentable? Yeah. Is it in the right area? Is it safe? Is it gated? Does it have security cameras? We dove into all those when we purchased a condo. Yeah. In land development, infrastructure. Do we have to clear it? How are the roads? How are we going to do the drainage? Yeah. All those things go into everything that we do and to make sure that it makes sense for us because we are doing it at a different profit margin than it would be done for a larger development. Great so point. Yeah. We, we have to make sure that that makes sense for us too because we have to make money to stay in operations. Absolutely. So, yeah, you know, there's nothing make, wrong with making money. Yeah, we have it, to make sure that we can do that Yeah, and it makes sense for us. We have a, a guideline and, and things that we follow in the, in the structure of being able to do our cost analysis and whether we move on a property for profit margin. And so. Sounds like you got a system. You know, that, that works for you. He's the system. <laughs> there yeah. you go. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a huge thing. He's, and, and he's my spreadsheet. <laughs> Gu- guru. You make a yeah. great spreadsheet. I'm a great spreadsheet. Justin. Appreciate it. Yes. Appreciate that. <laughs> Very much. Greenleaf Charcuterie Boards offer stunning charcuterie arrangements perfect for your special event and provides delivery for a hassle-free order experience. Their unique, wide variety of charcuterie boards are like no other. From your traditional charcuterie board to the Chantilly Dessert Board to the Cajun Board, they've got something for everybody. And ladies, Valentine's Day is right around the corner. So if you're looking for gift ideas, they've got an amazing prime filet steak board. And fellas, don't forget about their Valentine's board for your sweetheart. For more information or to visit them on the web, go to GreenleafCharcuterieBoards.com. Greenleaf Charcuterie Boards is a proud local sponsor of Local Leaders, the podcast. 
So now, um, one thing we do on this show is we like to do fun facts, and that and what we believe is these kind of uh, these kind of humanize you know our wonderful business owners a little bit, let people learn a little bit more about them. I got a kick out of y'all. I ain't gonna lie, y'all <laughs> y'all had some good ones. So we'll start with Chase's. Uh, Chase, I asked you if you purchased a yacht, what would you name it? You said almost there. And I thought that was a great name for a yacht. Almost there. Uh, what was your dream job when you were 12 years old? Baseball player. Typical, yeah. uh, for, for us guys, of course, um, mine was football player back in those days. I, went, I was never that good at baseball. I played, but I wasn't that good. Had a good swing on me. Yeah. yeah. You can knock it out the park. Huh? Very good. Uh, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? Self flight i love it yeah flying would be be an awesome thing and if you could travel anywhere where would you go my is it Maldi- maldives 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 i was close i'm a beach guy like yeah it. and i've seen pictures i just never pronounced it before <laughs> but i have seen true the beautiful life. pictures. yeah you're a beach guy very good uh justin Asked you the same questions. If you purchased a yacht, what would you name it? I like this. Front Porch Princess. Yeah, we joked That'd about that a perfect. couple of weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that conversation. We were talking about, we're going to buy a yacht, and I'm going to put Front Porch Princess <laughs> on the back. And so when I that saw it on your sweet. questionnaire, it was pretty funny. Well, if I see that in about 20 years, I'm going to be like, I know them dudes. Yeah, well, you can come. Yeah, yeah there you go. We'll go to Maldives on the Let yacht. Me, I'll bring the wine, man, and the, and the champagne. There ain't no doubt. Now, what dream job – when you, what was your dream job when you're 12 years old? Tell me about Nacho Mamas. Yeah, so I, that was a misprint. <laughs> Nacho Mamas is a restaurant somewhere around here. I don't remember where it's at, but I remember when I was in like sixth grade, we had to do a project, and it was like if you could start a business, what would it be? And I made this this like Mexican restaurant called. It was Nacho Taco. Oh, <laughs> like <laughs> it was not. It wasn't Nacho Mamas. It was Nacho Taco, and it was like Ooh, I kind of like it. It was a taco <laughs> with like the little circle, like the no smoking sign circle. That yeah. was my sixth grade design. Oh, that's perfect. Uh, but yeah, I, I put Love this. Uh, I wanted to be a, Me- a Mexican restaurant owner <laughs> in sixth grade. <laughs> that's, that's look, they got plenty of them nowadays. Yeah. And, and I love me some Mexican food. Yeah. So very good. I like the vision. Yeah, yeah <laughs> nacho <do> taco. <laughs> yes. Um, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? Teleporting. Yeah, I don't want to fly, man. That still wastes time. Yeah, I want to snap and be there. <laughs> be like Star Trek with that. Rrr. Yeah, yeah, I like that. And if you could travel anywhere in the world, you've always wanted to take a train around Europe, Germany, Switzerland, England, etc. Yeah, would not recommend right now. Yeah, yeah, not right now. <laughs> Maybe next year. <laughs> Maybe next year. Hopefully next year. So very good, very good. Now I want y'all to shout out your website, your Facebook, all those sort. We've talked about some great things that y'all do today. And so hopefully these listeners are they want more, right? They they got people out there right now and they're like, I need three acres of property today. So where do they go to get that information? Yeah. The, so the best the best way to like get the most current information is yep. to follow us on Facebook. It's at yep. Front Porch Properties. I don't know. I don't remember what that is. Yeah, what just search Front Porch Property Group. Is. Front Porch Property Group. Yep. Um I mean we have an Instagram, so you can follow us on Instagram. Yep. Um we got uh, we have you a Twitter. I don't I don't tweet. You do. Yeah, I don't need, we I have don't a Twitter. Twitter. We don't tweet. Much. Um, yeah. I don't tweet. And then yeah. we have our, our website, frontporchpg.com, Front Porch Property Group, just frontporchpg.com. Very good. And I'm going to link, just incidentally, I'm going to link all of that to the uh, description of this video. So don't, you know, wreck your car trying to find a pen right now. Don't even write it down. It's going to be linked. So all you got to do is click that link in the description. It'll bring you right to the Facebook page, Instagram, the website. I'm going to link all that to it. So very good. Look, y'all have fun today. We've been talking for 54 minutes, believe it or not. Nice. <laughs> and yep. uh, and I bet y'all could talk about property all day long. Yes. Uh, but I'm not going to keep you here all day because y'all probably worked all last night. Or y- Did you work last night? Yeah, we both worked last night. Oh, We're wow. Back y'all to ain't slept tonight. yet? <laughs> oh, we slept. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. A little Very bit. Good. And a I'm going to go back to sleep. Home at yes. 530, out the door at 9. <laughs> oh, Lord, y'all working hard, boys. Well, very good. Uh, I appreciate y'all coming on. Man, I enjoyed this. Thank you, Jim. This was, this was just fun. I do want to thank all my sponsors uh, for supporting what we do, do here at Local Leaders. Uh, Fit Body Boot Camp, Sandra Richard Realtor, BJ Pawn, TWFG, William Waldrop, SR Enterprise Painting, Fit Blends, Denim Springs, and Greenleaf Charcuterie Boards. We couldn't do any of this without all those folks who support us here. Um, our sister company, Envision Podcast Studios, we are executive producers of Real Life Real Crime, the podcast. And dropping April 5th, Woody Everton is starting his brand new podcast, Hashtag Justice 
four. So look for that. He's going to be going in depth on cold cases and trying to solve them. Uh, majority of those will be from this area. So really look for that to drop April 5th. We're very excited to be affiliated with that. And until next time, I'm Jim Chapman reminding you to love your community, support local business, just like Front Porch Property Group, and keep leading. Thank you very much, guys, for coming on. Thanks, Jim. Stephanie Berthelot and the crew at SR Enterprise can handle it all. From sheetrock to texture to paint. Give Stephanie a call at 504-432-9284. SR Enterprise, where they spread the paint and you spread the word.